Hello, welcome back to Market Perception. So in this video, we're going to be covering gold and silver, seeing when the, how prices reacted following our previous um, previous calls and our take profit. Currently, for me, both are in um, a level of consolidation and in a deep range. Now, I will just quickly just flip between the two so you can see what I mean. Right around where we've ran the all-time high from 2011, from over here, we're seeing a level of accu accumulation. Now, this is at the moment giving me the indication that we're going to potentially be seeing further expansion to the upside and the further rally. Now, obviously, we're, we're not here to fully guess what the market's going to do. We can only go off what we're seeing on the chart. At the moment, with gold, as you can see it back in August, we ran the high and then we seen a, we seen a deep retrace. All this move here and everything we traded, now we look at it on a bigger scale with a bit more PA and a bit more data. You can clearly see this has been a level of accumulation and now we're starting to see that expansion. For me, I personally wanted a deeper retrace coming in, inside this OB and filling this fair value gap. Now, I do still potentially see a dip to the downside. I'm not ruling it out at the moment. And um, the reason I'm a little bit skeptical and reason why I don't think price might not come down to this OB is what we're seeing here. We've seen a, another push above all time high. Yeah, we've potentially made a swing fairly pattern because we failed to break this this current high, but we've left a level of equal high, relatively equal highs, which to me, I do believe we'll get around at some point. Whether it's in the next next few weeks, next few months, um, we're not too sure. But price action we're seeing at the moment, we've reclaimed that all-time high again and we've retested it. And all the bodies of the candles there, very bullish PA, in, in my opinion. Again, what we inside, we're inside this OB. Now, yeah, when you if we highlight the full width, width to width as we show. You, know, you are getting the full range and it you know, does look like a d deeper box. But if you're using the bodies and if the only reason you'd use the bodies, that's as if you just want to trade on the weekly time frame, then you can use the bodies. That's totally fine. Using width to tail is just giving you the full range. Now, what you're seeing, we've seen a low, a lower low. What we could potentially see is a further push to the downside and another stab into this OB inside this range now what that will do that will do two things pretty similar to what we're seeing in uh with crypto we've seen strong bullish order flow retail of uh played wonder is that off the bottom retail i've had uh, some lovely trades over the last the last week bounce continue bounce off the trade line seeing a continued push up what I'd expect here, whether it's topping out yet or not, personally, I think we're going to top out once we get a little bit higher and again into that $2,000 range, but uh, who knows at the, at the moment. But what I'd look for is we've got a bank of bank of lows. Personally, I'd like to see a further low printed here. Then you've got your bullish swing because, like I've just said, you've got your, you've got your low, your lower low. And if we run the liquidity here, again, inside this OB, then you've got your, your higher low, nice bullish context, very good for um, bullish PA and good good to trade with. We're inside that weekly, weekly order block shown here. We've seen a nice swing. We're also above all-time high, so I'd expect similar move to this, a nice fast move down, getting people thinking it's going short, then seeing immediate buy-up. If we do see that prior to seeing any further price action to the upside, then the immediate target is going to be going to be around the twenty one hundred level. I have got pretty uh, high targets for gold. If this is potentially showing uh, a market maker sell model, which it's looking like it is, and if this could be a smart money reversal before we see that final leg up and that final expansive move. Using this current range, not the not the full range on the monthly. 
I'll be looking for this to finish up around that 2300. If we can get inside this rejection level of the, the Fibonacci. Now, again, anyone who follows us, we're not big on Fibs. We don't use it predominantly for trades. We use it for when we see um, price reach a level where we've got no data to, to go off. Then we can use our Fibonacci to gauge where we, we could potentially see uh, a reversal in price or where we could potentially see price further continue to the upside. Now, again, we're, we're also using the negative one, the negative one, 1.5 potential further targets, but not to be too greedy with the trade at the moment. There's no need to, to grab too much with this. I think if you, you've got some funds on the sideline, again, this is not financial advice. This is something what I personally do. Um, stack gold and silver, protect your wealth somewhat just by keeping it in a store of value you're you're protecting and you're hedging against other assets you you currently hold also you're hedging against fiat essentially that's what a lot are doing with crypto also but gold and silver obviously the old school old school buying for times of like we've just seen we've just seen uh, covid where we've seen huge price increase in gold and silver everybody's putting their assets in and that's what's causing price to uh to continue up to the upside Silver's a little bit different. Silver's very much suppressed. We've not seen the explosive move that we've seen in gold. Uh, we will get to that in a, in a second. But as you can see, using this current range, when you've seen bearish order flow here, eventually we've seen nearly a run on the upside of that. We've seen a swing fairly pattern, but look at the accumulation inside that discount range. It's been, it's been held since, if we say from March, 2021, all the way to January 2022 before we've seen an explosive move up. And again, what's what's drawing me to think this, we may not see that further dip into that 1830 level that we were calling them um, a couple of months ago, is the fact that we've reclaimed the all-time high from 2011. We've seen a nice bullish structure and we're starting to gain momentum again to the upside. We've broke structure here. What I'd like to see, and the further dip, getting down to that nineteen hundred level, maybe to squeeze the trade out to about eighteen ninety. If we, uh, if you want to really get some, get a little bit of leverage behind the trade, run this retail resistance. Got some liquidity here. Most likely inside this this tail, we'll find an OB. And look at that. There's our order block. Now let's just make that so it can only be seen on the weekly time frame, just so it's not. My charts are starting to look a little bit messy. I'm fully taking note. I'll delete it off the hour. That's okay. Just alter that to suit the time frame we're on. Like I said, retail played wonders here. Retail has to make money at some point, otherwise we wouldn't make money from that. But what we're seeing. In this current range, we've seen a top out, we've seen a break of structure to the downside. So we've got early indication that we, we are going to potentially see that dip. There's your break of structure. Now I know I've said I'm going to jump onto uh, silver, but I just I'll get onto that in a minute. Bottom left. There's your initial break of structure. We've seen a liquidity run here. We've seen price slowly top out, so potentially going into next week, we might see a further rejection. If we do, we'll wait. I personally think we're going to run all the liquidity that retail have gained here, and we're also we've got relatively equal lows, which was generated from cons consolidation inside the bullish OB here. have it at the bottom in the center now a reason for using this order block for your trading plan is what's well, quite simple to us we've seen a little bit of confusion inside uh, the discord of why and when you should use order blocks it's a couple of key factors we've ran a level of liquidity over from this side so we've seen a sweep on liquidity but we've seen an immediate um expansion to the upside again breaking a short-term high here 
and also breaking a short term high here. So we've seen that market structure shift to the upside. Now, this is where we believe the algo is flipped from being in a downtrend to now it's it's ready to start making moves to the upside. All this price action that we've seen, that is consolidation inside this disorder block before we've seen the expansive move up. Now, this doesn't have to be... Sorry, let's just sweet that so it's nice so where was i yeah so we've seen consolidation inside the order block which obviously generated this move with further broken structures to the upside run the buy side liquidity here and then obviously we've come inside very very tiny void but look at the precision this wasn't something I traded personally. I, I don't. I only trade gold um, when it's in a huge discount range because one, it's like I said, I like to like to stack gold and silver. And two, if I want to trade this, then I want to get the optimal trade, and that's where this is going to come in for me. Once we see, if we see further downside, and then we continue to break structure, it'll be a case of waiting for price to come down to this level. Now. I'd, w I'd wait for the liquidity to be run at that 1950 level. But if you want to place some orders, you can do a couple of things. If you highlight the OP, we always push that 50% level of the order block. We want to see price rally down to this level, but we want to see fast movements away for us to be truly bullish. But anywhere from that 50% down to the... OTA and the 7.9 level is going to be uh, perfect for our, our potential trade that we're looking for. Now, for stacking, we don't need to do too much in terms of um, placing. Let's just get rid of that box so it cleans it up a little bit. For stacking, obviously, we don't need to place a stop loss. We can just use this for um, a you know, potential dip. Again, it's just protecting some of your, your, your fear and hedging against hedging against fear. For your leverage trade, what you want to do, again, we, we push this quite a lot. If we use the 50% for entry, because I don't believe we need to be too greedy, we've always got to place your, your stop loss below the low. Um, Placing it going down a little bit lower time frame. Sometimes you can get caught out. Sometimes it works perfectly, but most often than not, you are going to get caught out because price will come really deep to get retail and get most people invested, thinking we're going to see a lot lower prices. Because retail, if we see further corrective move to the downside, retail are going to be shorting the hell out of it. But we're ready because we have that understanding of what the market's doing with, like I said, retail has to make money because this is how we're, we're paid at the end of the day. We've got levels of liquidity here and we've got levels of liquidity in form of uh, retail support in a strong trend line, bullish order flow, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Very good to trade in if you, if you choose, but eventually it will be run and that's what we're looking for now. So, our target for this trade is going to be down at that 1914 level. We're going to be looking to get inside the 50% range of the order block. Uh, top, let's get that over to the right hand side so we can see. So, this is the 50% level. This box a little bit lower is going to be uh, OTE of the, the move. If you want to wait for this, there's nothing up, up with that. That goes down to the 0.79 level of the Fibonacci. Like I said, if you want to use this to squeeze the trade a little bit, then of course your, your RR is going to increase hugely. Now for targets, I do expect further expansion to the upside. So we're most likely going to see um, whether it's COVID or whether they push it with what Russia's doing in Ukraine, which is absolutely horrendous um, at the moment. A first take profit, we're going to be target, targeting this um, SIBI, the, the imbalance we've got on the left-hand side. Again, reason for that, something we push a lot. We've seen a break of structure to the downside. We've seen liquidity. 
retail have had um, sell stops here and also buy stops. If they, if they were short in this, they would have had the sell stops above here. If they wanted to be biased in this, they would have bought out perfect retest on this candle here on the on the 8th of March. And then we've seen expansion. They would have got very excited targeting the uh, further all-time highs. But then we see the immediate breakdown in price, short-term rally. So this is technically... This is technically your first break of structure. This is would have been your first indication that the market's going to go short. But for confirmation of that, I personally wait for any structure in a short-term low on the left-hand side of the stock run to be ran first. Like I said, we've got we've got two levels, but for me, it, this has not been retested. Now this is going to be the first target, but it's also going to keep in mind that we could see a, a push above all-time highs again, and we could be targeting the high prices of that. Was it twenty nine hundred? I think we had on the fib. Is that on the weekly? Forgive me. Oh, sorry, twenty three hundred. If we fail to see. Um, a further swing fairly pattern inside this and we don't see a bearish price structure might be getting a bit boring for people watching now but if we if we don't see something like this then it'll be a case of holding um we can hold the trade and we can be targeting higher because these highs will get run at some point but obviously trading you want to be in and out of the trade you want to pocket the money to one side ready for further um further dips in the future but there's also nothing wrong with holding this trade if you if you choose again with stacking um whether you buy gold paper form or whether you get it physical to you to your door it's up to you personally i like to have the uh, the physical asset because i don't believe um that everybody is buying paper form and letting the vaults hold your your assets i don't believe everyone's going to get them in the future when it comes to it i think um, there's going to be a huge shortage and i think everybody's going to be going crazy not financial advice it's just something that i believe in like i said short-term target we've got a nice five to one one percent one percent risk six percent um six percent gain on a times five obviously we're looking at about that thirty percent increase in our position it's a perfect trade if we don't see this price structure here and we reclaim this level see very bullish context break above retest and the further expansion to the upside then we can start targeting the the fibonacci levels up to that 62 level now this is where it may be an idea that you can start offloading some of your position that you've stacked. Obviously, you've, you, there won't be any leverage behind this trade. I'd be personally out at it, 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 this level. I don't like to hold trades too long. If I'm, if I am leveraged, I want to be in and out of the trade. I'm not too interested in holding for moon, moon prices. You know, 24% in gold is, is going to be over a period of months, if not years. Whereas this this trade, we're inside this current range. We've got bearish context here to say it could be a retest before we see further downside. Like I said, for me, this is a this will be a long term trade up to that twenty three hundred level um, over the next few months. Very possible. But let's just recap that one. Just in case we're unsure, retail support in the form of a bullish order flow ICT concept, but we've got retail support. It will get run at some stage, no doubt. If we see higher before we see further downside, we'll short this level and ride that down to our buying position. Then if we do see that, then yeah, potentially we can ride this to all time highs, maybe take profit at the 20, 2100 level. That'd be fine. If we see a run to the downside from here, we're not only targeting the retail um, support, we're targeting the consolidation around this level into the 50% of the daily uh, of the four hour OB. Or if you want to hold for the OTE levels, look inside this box around the 1900 level, and then we can start taking from longs. If you are leveraging, stop loss goes below. 
the the wick that sorry the tail of the ob doesn't go on a lower time frame it goes on a time frame you're trading four hour there's your order block stop loss goes below there like i said it's only a one percent risk it's very minimal obviously doing it leverage yeah it is a, it is a five percent risk still fits inside the, the strategy we use but that's for gold that's all we're looking at at the moment it's a very slow moving market if it's not something you need to be on all the time it's just something that if you've got your analysis set you've got your order set we know what we're looking for then we, we can be ready like i said if we see expansion to the upside prior to the run on the lows then this trade will be altered to run the highs not to retest this level as long as this level's kept and it's not retested yet and we see downside from here and we see a rollover in price going into the next couple of weeks we're going to be waiting for the consolidation to be run at this point make a higher low inside the 50 percent down to the ota all around the 1900 level we don't have to pinpoint it too much for the again for the stacking but certainly for the leverage trade anywhere from that 50 percent is uh, is going to be an optimal optimal trade for the current range and if we get that like i said we can ride the trade it's not going to be a fast moving market I, I, i'm not anticipating anyway unless some serious kicks off in russia or unless covid miraculously makes a, a new variant and everything starts kicking off again but until then like i said we're ready for the for next moves we're showing bullish context we should seeing short-term highs broken but we want to see a little bit of dip personally to the downside now i have been saying for this whole video i'm going to jump between silver and gold and i've not done that yet so i do apologize but gold's gold moves a lot better than silver silver is very slow it's not moved at all out of this current range um it's very suppressed obviously what we're seeing with covid this is where the ic where i, I like ict and how he talks about these moves manipulation everything's planned because we've had we've had consolidation here and we've had a bank of lows where retail would, would again have, would either have the buy stops because they're targeting or targeting this high or they've also had sell stops where if you're seeing price rally below which you've seen they'll be selling at the retest before further downside obviously once we've seen covid or everybody's money got put into uh to metals obviously a stolen stolen value and to protect the protect the wealth but we've just seen further expansion to the upside but what silver's not done compared to gold is we've obviously not broken high we're still under that level now with that i do think silver could potentially see a dip below the low what i'm looking for with silver i mean that we've had this mark up for for ages now it's just not moved it's a pretty boring um asset to be in and it's pretty simple to to look at from my perspective i personally for me to get in any sort of trade with silver i want to see a dip below Let me just delete that because you can't really see that I want to see a run inside this OB. Now, again, yeah, I am using the full range because when we do drop down timeframes, it is about looking for the OB that's actually caused the break of structure to the upside. From a daily perspective, I'm still looking at that, that void. I've got marked up everything. I'll be looking at these levels. We've got a lat little down candle prior to the move up. We've also got a fair value gap inside that range. So to me, the confluence is around these levels. That is around that $15 level. Do we get that inside at the center? Yes. This is our, is that our monthly OB. Yes. bottom center yes so we've got the monthly order block highlighted there we've also got on all time frames it shows exactly the same it's not been retested it's not been filled 
we've got this firm value gap. Our firm value gap is where little or no trades have been placed. So price wants to rebalance. That is going to be a level it could target. And that's where I'm personally looking to get in a in a trade. We'll be coming deep inside that OB. It'd be nice to see where that fits in terms of the discount level. We're still it's above the 50%. The actual order block here that we just discussed a minute ago is, is right on the 50%. So this little OB here on that weekly time frame, this might be a level we can also anticipate, but again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's not going to happen too fast. It's not going to happen overnight. This will be something we'll be able to uh, to watch and just have our alerts set. Me personally, put our alerts down at these lows. Once we see a dip below the lows, we can start anticipating that we're going to see a rally in the short to the midterm. Let me just highlight this. I won't mark up OTA as obviously we've got the monthly and we've got the fair value gap inside that, so we don't want to be don't be too messy. Obviously, these highs are marked out because there's your buy side liquidity that we've, we've run two levels off. So again, as with gold, we've seen very bullish context. We've seen a run on the liquidity here. Now, when you look at that, that goes back to, to from 2015 all the way to current. So you can't look at that and tell me none of this people didn't uh, people in the know didn't know what was going on covid's not just miraculously just appeared it's in my, our opinion it's all planned that's not being um conspiracy theorists it's just when you study ict everything is planned everything's already mapped out like i said we've seen very we've got very bullish context here we've seen a run on the lows immediate break of structure to the upside our target is the high up at around that 50 dollars level Again, we've got that bearish bearish order flow. We've seen lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and we've seen a continuation of that. This move, as we always talk about, a stop run and break of structure to the upside is the algorithm flipping from being in a downtrend to now it's ready to start seeing higher prices and then to a potential bull market. So it's just, there's your liquidity to the downside. When you've got a short-term high, that is your buy side liquidity. Two levels of that, we've run this short-term high here. We've run that small consolidation where we've seen price reject, and also we've had the, the high of the highest, uh, the highest high in the range. Sorry, can't struggle to get my words out. And then obviously we've seen the expansion to the upside, but immediately. Um, Silver's dropped back into consolidation. It's a very suppressed asset, but you know, as you can see, it can move when it's allowed. Um, I do believe it, it, it will move eventually. Um, there is a document that was surfaced some months ago that showed you that JP Morgan, BlackRock, and some other big institutions and banks have actually took the shorts off silver, which could potentially why we've seen We've seen price being allowed to move in the expansive moves of sin. Obviously, as you know, you, you look all the way back here, we've not seen moves like this in a long time. Even when we go back to recession, the, the expansive moves to the upside when we hit recession wasn't nowhere near as big as what we're seeing now. So all-time highs, certainly the target. In terms of getting in a leverage trade with silver, um, I'm not going to advise it at all. The the range is too big. Um, like I said, it's very suppressed. If we get a deeper retest inside this monthly OB that we've highlighted and we get a bit closer to the low and into that OTE level of the, uh, the FIB, then we could potentially run a small leverage trade on that. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to have to now.
that is a box inside a box inside a box it's just ugly i do apologize but just to get the uh, the theory and to get our levels this is where we take a leverage trade we don't take a leverage trade on silver um unless we get lev if we get a stab inside this box and we get down to that 13 that $13 level, then we can open up some leverage because then the, the risk is going to be very minimal. We can we can place our stop loss. Oh, it's still too big. I don't like it. No. Ignore me. That's getting deleted. Just stack. <laughs> Just fully stack. Uh, it's not one to leverage the, the the range is too big that you do not want to be risking 25 percent of your portfolio on any trade um that's just no one would financially advise that stacking's a little bit different because obviously you're stacking for the long term being in leverage trades you want to be in and out of a trade once we get the move once we get the move to the downside if we see further bullish pa from there again we always talk about bullish pa we want to see a low short-term high further short-term low then we want to see a break of structure if we see that down at this level we can then place our buy order at the top of the ob don't be greedy and look for um look for ote while you're practicing the method use the top of the candle yes i know that's not the top because i've not placed it at the top like a fucking idiot Use the top of the OB, we can place our stop loss below this candle. It'll be obviously around that 5% level until it happens. We uh, we don't know. I'm not going to start guessing what price is going to look like. If we get down to this range, print some bullish PA like this, then yeah, we can open a little bit of leverage, but using the current range, it's, the, the, it's far too big. And I don't want to advise people placing a 25% stop loss because that does no way fit into our uh, trading whatsoever. So apologize for putting that on. But this is what we want to be looking for. Wait for the run on the lows prior to, yeah, wait for a run on the lows. We don't want to see it expansion to the upside first because that would be, we'll be looking for bearish context. If we run the liquidity here, we'll be looking for shorts, potentially target that. For me, I want to see the manipulation to the downside prior because then we've got one, we're going to have got nice clean targets. We've got that fifty dollars level. We could potentially see further upside than that, like we did with gold using this current range, fibbing top to bottom. If we are going to see some more craziness, and we're going to see uh, COVID again, or Russia's going to start World War Three, which I highly doubt because I think that'd be very fucking stupid. Then we're going to be looking at around the hundred dollars level now people might be thinking that's crazy because from 2011 to current price we've never seen above 50 dollars but as i've said i believe gold uh, silver is very highly suppressed we'll have to find the documents just to back up what we're saying but we do believe that the shorts the big shorts have been taken off silver and that's why we could be seeing these the, the expansion to the upside now if we get to run the lows prior to the highs here we get a nice deep retrace russia's calming down the ukraine thing's not um as predominant as it's been it's not as ugly as it's been um and it slows down then we can we can anticipate the dip we can start stacking stack to high heaven all the way down to the 12 dollars level personally so don't see any any price action below below the $12 level from there we can wait store your assets in a safe place somewhere in your home or somewhere that you own or with a family member that you really trust don't leave it in a vault with uh, the company you bought it off because again I don't believe you'll get it when the time comes so make sure you've got your assets and you're looking after them personally just as we do with crypto we store it in our ledgers our own keys store your assets store your gold and silver at home bury it in your garden put it underneath a flag in a dog's kennel wherever you choose <laughs> but yeah 
see a run on the lows stack to high heaven once we get further a bit further downside and we start seeing bullish context on the lower time frame maybe drop down to that daily in a four hour then we can prompt you with a leverage trade but for now it's like i said the range is too big and i'm not i'm not wanting to um to open a leverage trade on this so this has been a bit of a longer video than i actually wanted um i've also not shown my face today so hello everybody <laughs> And I think that's it for this one. Um, like I said, it's a slow moving market. It's going to be something that we'll just have to keep our eye on going forward. But we've got targets, we've got bullish context. So we're potentially going to be seeing maybe all time highs on gold and silver. Uh, but short term, we're looking for a bit of bearish price action to get ready to get to get into our position to get ready to long. Like I said, if we can be targeting. 50 50 dollars you're nearly four times just on your stat positions if you you want to flip them there that's going to be totally fine it's going to be a level that we're looking at as well but if we do see um price rather than seeing a swing fairly pattern like with that bearish price action you see a reclaim and we see a further move to the upside and we've got some craziness going on with covid and russia then we're looking all the way up to that 120 dollars level so if anyone's got any questions or they don't understand what I'm saying and they don't understand how I'm marking up order blocks and what order blocks I'm looking for, please do message us because we really want to, to help you understand them. Um, it's a very simple method to use for your trading. We always believe price comes down to the order block that has caused the breakage structure to the upside prior to running a level of liquidity, and that is this monthly OB. The range is from... $19 down to 12 this is going to be the range we're using to get long in the market. Again, seeing suppressed price action, consolidation to be truly bullish, stab below, further break of structure the upside from there. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we've got a little bit of um, news popping up later, I believe, with Mike. I've seen a little tweet going on with some Discord uh, emojis. I'm not sure what he's up to, but I'm sure we'll find out by the end of the day. If you haven't done already, please like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter. We're also on Trading View. Um, get the algorithm moving for us, guys and girls, because we're our small um, small group at the moment. We're a little bit unseen. It's fine because we know we just keep pushing our contents out. We've got a lot of people who follow our calls and making money off our calls, which at the moment are, it's just free. We're just dropping them left, right and centre. And we've had, a, we've had a good time over the last few months, so we want to continue that, but we want to build a community around us. And if we can bring a few of you into the team, then going forward, that's something we're also going to be looking at doing. But for now, let's fucking nail the trades. Let's make some free money. Let's take away the money from these institutions. Let's grab a little bit of their pie, and then we can uh, benefit ourselves. So again, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.